All right. Respect was given and respect was also taken away as awards start to drop down. Right. The Big 12 has announced their all Big 12 team as well as the awards for the season. And I'm going to be honest, a little shocked at a couple of selections here, but we'll dive into that. But but first, we're going to celebrate the Sooners that did make the all Big 12 team. But then there's also the individual awards outside of it, the national ones, where two of our guys 100% got done dirty. Let's dive into it. But before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. Please, if you like the content, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We would love for you to join this family that costs football fans. We've got a lot to talk about, especially the way the transfer portal's jumping. But that's for another video. This one is about the Big 12 Awards that just came down the line. Let's take a look at those awards, talk about them, and uh, yeah, we, we got some debates here. And then we'll talk about the two national awards that really screwed up in their selection. Let's jump in Big 12 first. So as you can see here, all Big 12 team. First team, shout out Billy Bowman, Danny Stutzman, Drake Stoops. And the unanimous top quarterback in the Big 12, Dylan Gabriel. So I know, yeah, a lot of y'all fans weren't fond of uh, Dylan Gabriel, but I try to told y'all that, that kid was something special. He was a real deal. He ain't perfect, but he can play. And he proved it. The numbers that he put up this season told you everything you needed to know. And yeah, I, I'm excited the fact that we, we got another quarterback that was up there nationally in the passing game, right? Like, how do you complain, right? Dylan Gable was sixth in yards per game out there, and he even finished a game, right? He come up here, he's fifth in the nation in yards, totals 3,660 with his 25, with his uh, 30 touchdowns and to six interceptions. 30 touchdowns to seventh tie with Caleb Williams, which is even funnier. Somebody put out a stat not too long ago. You know, this season, statistically, Caleb and, and Dylan Gable were basically neck and neck Dylan Gable, 69.3% to Caleb Williams, 686 They both completed 266 passes. Dylan threw four less passes at 384 compared to 388. Touchdowns, they both had 30. Dylan had one additional interception, and Dylan led the way in yards per game and actually attempted less passes per game, of course, because statistically he did that. But Dylan finished the season, you know, what, roughly – <sighs> at about just under 70%, you can't beat that, right? Statistically, that man is doing everything we asked for him to do. And, I mean, of course, we really hoped that he would have done more, you know, taking over games and all that jazz. But I'm just happy at the fact that statistically he had a massive season. So 3,600 yards, and he rushed for an additional 373. He had over 4,000 total yards this season. Shout out to DG. Then, of course, you know, that's first team. Now, when we look at the second team, we've got Ethan Downs and Andrew Ryan from the offensive line that made it. I'm surprised that Tyler Guyton didn't go, but that's for another day. I think the injuries the last few weeks is what kept him out. But Billy Bowman getting up there. Drake Stoops, of course, was the top wide receiver in the Big 12. Don't argue with me. Argue with your mama. He definitely deserved to be on this list. And so, yeah. I'm excited seeing that this is what we had this season. We finished 10 and 2. It would have been nice to get 11 and 1 or and play in the Big 12 Championship, but you know, life happens. Can't complain. We did well this year. This was a very good year, very good bounce back year, and we've set the foundation for next. But it's funny because I was looking here at the awards. We didn't win any awards at all. We were honorable mentions in a few of these awards, but this is what jumped out. Offensive player of the year is Ollie Gordon. Makes sense. He leads the nation in rushing. Can't complain about that, right? Newcomer of the year was A.D. Mitchell at Texas. Now, Andrew Anthony was up there for that before he got injured in the Texas game. So, granted, I get it. Makes sense. Defensive freshman of the year, Anthony Hill and Ben Roberts tied it up for Tech in Texas. Kind of was hoping that, you know, you may see a little Bowman in there, but I get it. He didn't play enough to probably get that award. Totally get that there. But the coach of the year, Mike Gundy got it. So, you know, I've gone back and forth with some folks on the Bird app. And honestly, I came down to consensus. The winner of that award should have been Neil Brown over there at West Virginia. 
Yep, I said it. Because Neil Brown was picked to be 14th in the Big 12, and he finished season 8-4. and four. You cannot ask for more from a coach when he is doubted that much. Right? Like, like what, what did you... Season 8-4, and 6-3 and three in conference, tied with Kansas State and Iowa State. For third, for what was that, fourth in conference? Neil Brown worked his butt off. Outside of that, honestly, he probably should have went to the other 10 win coaches. Sarkeesian went 11 and 1. First time Texas has gotten 10 wins plus, well, 11, yeah, yeah, 10 wins plus since 2009, title year. Kind of deserved that one. And Brent Venables turned around from 6 and 7 to 10 and 2. Now, granted, everybody expected Oklahoma to be there. Oklahoma should have been there last year, too, based upon the talents and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we like it. We, we completely reversed that bad boy. So, based upon all of that, yeah, we probably should have finished up there at Coach of the Year. But I do think that Neil Brown should have got it. So, that's the Big 12 Award. Top of the comments, let your boy know what's your thoughts. Love to hear from you all in regards to that. But I want to talk about these two awards real quick that teed me off that we got bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived on. Let's talk about Stutzman, right? So the, the Bolitnikoff Award has named off their finalist. You have Tyrone Hopper from Missouri. You have Jeremiah Trotter from Clemson. You have Eddie Ulafoscio. You have, that's from Washington. You have Nathaniel Watson from Mississippi State, and then you have Peyton Wilson from North Carolina State. All guys, all formidable opponents. When you look at the numbers in comparison, look at this. Danny Stutzman, 99. Total tackles, 47 solos, 52 assists. He had two passes defended, three sacks, forced fumble, interception, returned for a touchdown. Statistically, he's up there with everybody else. I mean, he's at least up there with Tyron Hopper. And defensively, Oklahoma's up there with them. Based on advanced metrics. Not too far off from Trotter either. And, you know, Trotter has the five and a half sacks. Hopper has the, he has what? Three sacks, just like Danny Stutzman. Eddie had his three sacks, 77 tackles. And I know Oklahoma's defense is better than Washington's. I don't. That kind of shocked me to see that. I mean, of course, I th- knew that Peyton Wilson and Nathaniel Watson was going to be in there because they have literally a hundred and something tackles, hundred and thirty tackles in the season. So yeah, you put those guys up there because you know they did that and he had some decent defenses. But why is Stutzman being overlooked? Absurd, right? Yeah, ain't no way that this dude should not be in the buckets award conversation. At that point, he may as well come on back. Playing the SEC and win that award. Take that award home with you. You should. Go ahead, Danny. Just say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stay for more and more year. I'm going to play in the SEC. And I'm going to show y'all I'm a first-round talent. Take that. That man got bamboozled, hoodwinked. Just, just disrespectful, right? Let's go into the next award. So Paycom dropped their... Jim Thorpe Award finalist. Three names you have on there is Cooper DeJean, Malachi Starks, as well as Trey Taylor from Air Force, Georgia, as well as Iowa. Right? And guess who ain't on that list either? Billy Bowman. It's absurd to think that Billy Bowman did not make this list. Because looking at this here, look at these are the numbers. Shout out to Bob Prisbillo for taking the screenshot and putting this up on the bird. Because you know we all mad because of this, right? Cooper, 41 tackles, two interceptions, five passes defended through week 10. Malachi Starks, 43, two interceptions, six passes defended. Trey Taylor, 71 tackles, three interceptions, and he returned a 51-yard touchdown on that interception. So cute. Four passes defended. Billy Bowman, 61 total tackles, three tackles for a loss. Four pass breakups in line with everybody else. Six interceptions and three pick sixes. Can somebody explain to me how this man did not get picked? 
Can somebody explain to me how this man did not get chosen for the Thorpe Award? Someone explain to me how Billy Bowman got overlooked for the Thorpe Award. No one can give me this answer because it's preposterous. Not only is it ludicrous that this man did not get this man just for real got bamboozled. The numbers say it. I ain't shading our boys, you know, Cooper and and Malachi or Trey. I'm shading Paycom. You have at least four people on this name, on this list. And Billy Bowman's name is supposed to be all over it. He's got 61 tackles, which is more than two guys. He's got six interceptions, which is more than everybody on this list. He's got three pick sixes, which is more than everybody on this list. Five passes, four passes defendant, which is what? The least amount on here? Up oh, tied with Trey Taylor at Air Force. Why is the agenda against Oklahoma players at the national level? Why are they doing us like this? Why are, why are they treating us as bad? Can somebody explain that to me? Hop in the comments let your boy know what's your thoughts. It's absurd to think that we shouldn't be on these lists nationally, right? It's absurd. Am I crazy? Tell If I'm crazy, tell me I'm crazy right now. I would love to hear it. If you made it this far, you like the content, the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Love to have you join this family college football fans. We're about to go bananas with the transfer portal. This week, you're seeing all the names go in. Officially, it happens December 4th, except for for grads. If grads can do it, they're going to do it, and they're going to go ahead and commit places. But undergrads, December 4th is when everything goes down. And I think those are the players we'll probably focus the most on are going to be your grads because it's who we're going to want to put our hands on for next season. Anyway, YouTube says check out one of these videos. I highly recommend it. Made it for you. Thank you for making it to the end. We'll talk soon. Peace.